my guest tonight has a passion for practical and magical uses of body sex, emotions, pain, fear, pleasure, and that magic word, orgasms. For 18 years, she has curated group experiences that serves beings who wish to surrender to healing traumas of all origins. She is known around the world as a clinical and soul sexologist and orgasmic whisperer, and we get one-on-one with her right now. Nikki Morgan is here. Hey, Finch. Hey, now, what you got on over there? Oh, you know, I was, I was, I was having an argument, okay. and then I was like, "Oh snap! I gotta, I gotta get on with Finch. Let me hurry up and just kind of put a little something on real quick." Not to me, but speaking my life, so I'm just, you know. <laughs> so you was having an argument, and you got naked, and then you remembered you had to do the podcast, and then you put on. <laughs> I mean, out of courtesy and respect for your audience, I don't want to blow out their eyes and their heads. No, you know what I mean. But no, actually, I'm, I'm, I generally always walk around naked. So, <laughs> and um, and I feel most comfortable nude. Um, so I do my best to find a medium where I can still be comfortable and you can still not get kicked off of the internet. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much for thinking about the FCC tonight. Okay, right. you know, I mean, you know, we finding this resonance here. This is what we doing. <laughs> well, I, I would, I would gather that you walking around naked would kind of constitute you being a sexual alchemist, right? No, um, my nudity is based in just freeing the natural body. Ah, uh, it- they are, they are not inclusive of one and the other. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So 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 your body is like you've seen it as a caged bird with clothes on and you need to free it. You know what? Yes, yes. And if and, and if I'm wearing clothes, it is for adornment purposes. So yes. So but you do you do this around the house. Do do you go outside naked or um I find in the house I'm naked ninety percent ninety nine point nine percent of the time. That's a lot um, of percentages. That's a lot I of percentages. Welcome, <laughs> I, and any guests, they're welcome to be as comfortable as they wish. Um, and then what I do is I also bring a lot of, um, if, if it's outside of the house, I find uh, new beaches. Um, I do nude events. Um, anything that allows us to, again, free the, the natural body. I just did a retreat um, two months ago, and we were doing a nude we were having so much fun. We ended up doing um, a nude uh, fashion show with with, um, with runway and everything. <laughs> wow. Okay. So much fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you describe yourself as a sexual alchemist, right? Is that the I proper am. term? Okay. So for for the listening audience, can you describe what you do as a sexual alchemist? Ah. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking. Um, uh, we're, I'm using arousal to transform, transmute um, any emotions or stagnant energies or belief systems or limited belief systems into uh, into whatever it is that we're looking to create so that it no longer stagnates uh, our, our primordial being or okay. our prime beingness. The, the, the part of ourselves that, that is that is all our infinite selves versus our uh, our identity. So their sexual energy is creator energy. So it is that energy that uh, that animates everything, everything in the universe, everything outside of the universe, everything beyond it. So uh, so basically, we're using that to transfer into what it is and how we make things matter. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now. I watched a video you had on meditation and masturbation. Mm-hmm. Now that word is dirty to a lot of people. I don't, I don't find it to be dirty either one of them. I found that video to be interesting. It reminds me of what I understand about uh, tantric sex. So for the audience, can you explain the connection between meditation and masturbation? Sure. 
So, um, so one, j just to first address your, your masturbation mention. So masturbation, the, like the etymology of this word, it does mean like to beat yourself up. Um, however, when I say self-love, a lot of, or self-loving or self-pleasuring, a lot of times it, it's still so nuanced that people uh, may not acknowledge what I'm actually talking about. True. So sometimes I, I, just, I just keep the word uh, masturbation, but um, I own it and I transmute it so people can understand. So outside of that, the, the balance, the, the, what, what is a life between these two? In arousal and orgasm, um, there's something that happens neurologically with us. It, um, it, it offers, uh, it taps into our alpha, our theta, and our gamma brain waves. Mm -hmm. And when it taps into these brain waves, these are brain waves in our meditation as well as our aroused states or our orgasmic states, both do this. Um, this is where you might find yourself in your most ma in, in, in the most malleable manifestation portion of your life, right? Um, of your day. You can be when you're just waking up. It could be when you're daydreaming. Um, and it also, um, they both also uh, get your, your, the, uh, your brain waves also match the heartbeat of the earth. Okay. So when, 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 it, when it's aligned with the heartbeat of the earth, then again, you become in harmony. You become in harmony and resonance with your universe. So that's another reason why. Um, so what you think, become. Um, your sexual energy bridges your imagination to your physical reality. Of course, there's also serotonin, um, uh, dopamines um, that that also uh, run through the body. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite is oxytocin because oxytocin um, offers uh, it's a trust hormone, and so when you're is sitting in that trust, it allows you it allows you more space in your mind and your spirit to find other creative ways to address a situation, to find um, to find ways to uh, to transmute a situation. And pain even doesn't feel the same as it would if you were in your restraint way of um, of being. Okay. All right. N now, <laughs> when I see the term soul sexologist, yes. what does that mean? Like, are you running around here snatching souls at the midnight hour? <laughs> I will show up in your dreams. Uh, it, um, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> like, are you showing up uninvited or you, I mean, what you doing I, in the dream? I'm, I'm, I'm not showing up if I'm not invited. I'm, oh. invited. I'm not invited. I do not. Same with our conversations. Consent is a very, very big thing for me spiritually as well as physically. OK, mm -hmm. so you showing up in people's dreams. How does this happen? Walk me through that. Yeah, well, um, it's. I magnetize. I magnetize who is in need of or who is most ready, who is most available for the work that is to be done. Okay. Um, and so when I say soul sexologist, you know, a lot of times when we're thinking about sex and sexuality, we think of just body sex. We think of, oh, you know, this feels so good. I'm so horny. Oh, my God. Oh, my boyfriend, this, my girlfriend, this. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. All these things. Uh -huh already but we add other layers to it other layers like understanding that orgasm is a language a language that allows us to navigate our infinite self so what i mean by that is imagine that if everything already exists, if we are these infinite beings, everything already exists, and this is things that you can play around even in, um, in physics, in your quantum physics, and so on and so forth. So you can research that if you wish. Mm -hmm. But where I am with it is everything already exists. And so when you have the awareness of whole self, right, that includes shadow self, that includes all of acknowledgement of you are another self this person sitting next to me is another self right mm -hmm. so in, in understanding that i can center in my primordial self in my soul self and when i start to make decisions from my soul or my primordial desire from my primordial knowing then life starts to become my lover 
okay? And then it's a matter of my relationships, not just with my partners that I might interact with in my day to day, but literally because life is my lover, there are, there are different types of communication. There's mm -hmm. different types of observation. Um, there are other senses that we use. There are other ways to experience an ecstatic embodiment and orgasmic life that you can access. And I'm not saying this poetically. I mean this very, very literally. I mean, with sexual energy, which sexual energy is creator energy, it allows you to tap into your telepathy. It allows you to tap into your other, your other selves, your, 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 uh, your adjacent lives, your parallel lives. It allows you to connect to those things. It allows you to connect to your Akashic records. There are so many things. It is limitless what can be done when our whole collective is moving from our uh, our primordial self. And a lot of people will call this flow. However, there is a deeper understanding of flow when you start to accept the body in a different way, when you have a deeper intimacy and also a different kind of communication with your organs because your organs also have consciousness. Right. So this is what I'm talking about. Now, you said partners. Do you believe, it, is, it, is it beneficial for men and women to have multiple partners that they engage in is that healthy um the question is loaded for me um i think in that question there's an assumption that there is a better and a worse um and uh i believe that we each have an individual way of of communicating we all have a way of what is best for the moment mm -hmm. um so if you only have the capacity and you have a and you have a specific understanding of love that may have you speak to only one person then that's just what it is okay you know for me uh i i was i was born um <laughs> that there, there's never been a time that i haven't felt that um that everything is my lover and it's okay for me to have multiple lovers and frankly if i'm enjoying something a whole lot and i love someone i i just naturally want to share um and of course that doesn't mean that there's not negotiation of what that means in each relationship just like you have friends same you know same thing you know right. so that's yeah so it's not a healthy or a better or worse for me not at all it's not a not a better or worse. It's just a preference of choice and what people feel is best for them. Correct. Correct. Okay. It's okay. A matter of awareness. Yeah. Okay. All right. So so what is the secret behind the touchless orgasm? Because people have been asking me that all week. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> uh, the secret. You know, the secret is actually letting go of duality. Ah. Okay. It's letting go of duality. If there is one thing, there, there are many things to learn in it before you can acknowledge what that is. And mm -hmm. certainly I can show you how to feel through it. But if you really want to understand it in a detail that allows you cognitive understanding, it requires letting go of duality. It doesn't mean that you can't play within duality, but stepping outside of it allows you uh, a different understanding of your identity. Um, uh, it allows you to understand what parts of your personhood is a habit, what parts of your personhood is actually coming from center. And then when you start making those decisions, uh, the decisions that you make will have less entropy and be more resonant with the systems that are open and willing to resonate with you. Okay, all right, so, 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 I've seen videos where I saw you moving your hand over the top of people. Yeah. You, you wasn't touching them. You just, yeah. you're doing this kind of thing right here, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. What happens during this process? Mm. What happens during this process? Do you want to ask me a, a more specific question or? Well, I guess what I'm asking is what what's happening with the person and what's happening within you? Ah, uh, okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, I like that question. Thank you. <laughs> I knew you would like that. I knew it. I knew it. 
Uh, you know, I like you, Finn. So, uh, okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, what's happening with the body that's laying in front of me? And I'm saying the body because we are not our body. Right. Okay. So, what I'm doing is I'm assisting the body in tapping into its parasympathetic system, but then also helping the body to, in essence, rest, sleep. And in that, while being in that waking sleep, your, your soul, your energetic body starts to express itself. And in expressing itself, your physical body has to reconcile what is this infinite my body understands that it is limited. What is this infinite moving through me, this sexual energy, this creator energy that's coursing through me, that's bringing me all of the awareness when I'm in my parasympathetic system? Okay. So when, when we are in that space, it creates an ecstatic feeling. Sometimes people leave their bodies. Sometimes when the, when, when, when the energy is, when the sexual energy is moving through their bodies, that creator energy, that life force energy is moving through their bodies. It is, it's breaking loose and shaking loose any of the, uh, the subconscious uh, that lives in the body, the, the old memories, the fights that you never let, let go of, the mm. heart hurts, um, the, the I'm angry at my boyfriend, whatever the thing is, it, it pushes and moves it and transforms it. And I, uh, my personhood also steps out of the way. I actually, I call it like I, I, I sit in my, in, I, my personhood sits in my back seat or rather Nikki sits in, in my back seat, right? Okay. And, um, and so my primordial self works only as a vessel to just assist in moving this energy. Mm. That's it. So you like you like a traffic cop. You just helping them move. You know through. what I actually call it? The other day it popped in for me. I called it I'm a cosmic plumber. Ah. <laughs> I was like, you know, this is kind of like plumbing. This is like you, you know, like liquid plumbing. Drano. Okay. <laughs> little liquid you know, Drano. If there's a little clog there, I'm gonna be like, mm mm, here's an orgasm here and an orgasm here. Cause the orgasm is a surrender, it's a release, right? Uh-huh. So so yes, if there's a clog. You need to come see me <laughs> or not <laughs> or not. <laughs> now, what, what would the or not be? Or not. The or not could be that you you take one of my meditation, masturbation, Monday classes, learn it, feel it, and then do it for yourself and find sacred time. Take your time. Find patience in your pleasure. Take care of your body in such a way that you feel safe, you feel belong, you feel there is no strain. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to do but be. And when you're in your beingness, then all your answers, all the questions, all the, the challenges that, 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 that you're having, that you're bucking up against, they're gonna show themselves and then you have an opportunity to do something about it. Um, or uh, in Taoism, they call it, they call it a point point of no action, mm -hmm. you know, um, or Wu Wei, right? Where you just you allow yourself to be. You are in the being. That's what that's what orgasm actually is. It shuts down your frontal lobe, and because it shuts down your frontal lobe, in your frontal in that pre in that prefrontal cortex lies your identity. Okay. It lies your fear. It lies your inner critic. So. When you're in that orgasmic place, you're not thinking about, oh my God, what about those bills? Oh my God, what am I gonna wear tomorrow? And if you are thinking about that, then maybe you wanna come see me or uh, not. You you wasting somebody's <laughs> time if you think about bills while you in the in the in the act. Right, right, right. And 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 you start to learn a different because you're in that beingness, you start to approach things from a different source the value of something changes because you understand abundance differently. So rather than working for paying your bills, mm -hmm. you work for how can I make sure that my lifestyle meets the requirements of my soul self? 
And because you are answering that question instead of that question with the bills, then you are now in a holistic understanding of what you require. Got you. Yeah. Now, I'm itching to know mm-hmm. the touchless orgasm. Can yeah. someone do it to you? You know, honestly. W- w- what would it take for someone to mm-hmm. razzle and dazzle and, and, and you know? Mm-hmm. Thank you for asking me that question, Finch. Thank you for that. Um, You know, I have been plotting for this time for millennia. Ah. And so now that there are so many more people that have sat down in their skin, addressed their emotions, got to unpack all of that stuff, now we can start to learn touch this orgasm in a way that is not so showy and performative, but Mm -hmm. now we can get into it. And now that we can get into it, maybe, maybe this is the time we're in the pandemic time. There are people that are, they're much more aware. We are experiencing a massive awakening across the planet. Mm -hmm. And I am ready to lay down and So thank you for that question because the the direction is in the question. And now that you have asked it, it's out there. (laughs) And I am an orgasmic witness. So it Uh, will be. It will be. (laughs) It will be. Okay. Okay. So so Uh so now now we're gonna I'm gonna continue uh this conversation in the clubhouse. Are you available to to join me for this conversation in the clubhouse? If not, um, it's fine. If not, it's fine. You know what? Um, I I'm reading Audre Lorde's um, Audre Lorde's uh, erotic erotic uses of the erotic. Okay. Um, so if you ping me, um, I can be there for a little bit, and we can talk a little bit more about it. I don't want to make it a quickie, but um, I certainly will take my time in the time that we do have. No, nobody likes a quickie, Nikki. <laughs> I mean, it depends on what the situation is. So I guess it, I guess it does. <laughs> I will right. tell you. You know what? If you allow me to for that quickie, I can come into the clubhouse and I can certainly bring people through a six minute, a six minute uh, orgasmic breathing exercise. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. And the reason I'm even saying that is because what I do in the mornings um, in Clubhouse, I have a room where I offer a uh, uh, vibration meditation where people are using their vibrators in, with their meditations, and we only do it for 15 minutes, and they get profound information about their bodies and their experience within that. Okay. So. I will. I'm happy to do that if you're open to it. I am open to it. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. You said, "Hmm. Uh. 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 Uh." All right. So, can, can you describe how orgasms can help with certain sex-specific illnesses, such as prostate cancer in men and fibroids in women? Oh yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. So firstly, um, when we're addressing our, when, 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 when there's a, I'm sorry, I have a huge horse of a dog over here who's making some beautiful rumbling noises and it's very resonant for me. Maybe okay. he, got, he got a soul sex allergist visiting him in his dreams right now. Yes, probably. Most probably, <laughs> yes. So, um, <laughs> so, um, so. Our, so just our genitals alone, there's so many ways to address this, but there's something in particular I can address right now here. Um, Our genitals have, uh, they have reflex, there's reflexology points in our genitals, right? And and prostate cancer, as well as fibroids, also speak to um, an under or an overactive or blocked uh, sacral energy. Okay, so that deals with our desires, that deals with our um, with uh, with how we feel about our relationships, our fathers, our mothers, our sisters, all of those things. And then when we look at it in in a whole people, right? Because those two things that you mentioned 
are both leading in black people. Mm. Those two, th th those two are leading in black people, right? And so when we look at the um, the emotional aspects that um, uh, that are being addressed mm -hmm. in, um, in 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 these in these environments, we can see how these ailments that you've mentioned, how they 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 have a ratio of what those emotions are, how they're processed in that um, in in that. And how high those um, those statistics are. Okay. So with touch this orgasm, um, so, so so with touch this orgasm, what it does is um, because we're using life force energy to move, we tap into our parasympathetic system. It it allows us an understanding of where and what is going on with our organs, so that if there are emotions that are not being expressed, then it will be in that moment or it gives you an indicator that, oh, this is what I must address. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, for example, um, uh, your kidneys, right? Your kidneys is something that it process, uh, it, 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 it gets depleted by fear, worry, anxiety. Um, or for example, uh, your, um, your bladder, your bladder deals with, um, with, uh, with, Worry, um, anxiety, uh, mistrust. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are things that different organs will process different emotions, and these and these emotions are energies. And if they are stagnant, then at some point they become they they, they start to materialize. Okay, and so touches orgasm allows for processing of that. It moves these things. Not only that, but um, because you're in that, because it brings you center, because it allows you center, because it moves all these things out of, it, it quiets the mind, it allows you to feel, it allows you to express from, from soul center, then it naturally, naturally you feel like you want to take better care of yourself without having to think about it. You naturally feel like, oh, okay, you know what? I, I, I feel like I just want to work out today. Or you naturally feel more playful. You know, you naturally want to have joy. You naturally want to laugh. You, you know, there, there, there's a way, there's a charisma that happens with this. Mm -hmm. All of these things are so intertwined. And we've been coming from a, from a culture, our Western culture, that's perpetuated compartmentalization of all of these things. And right. so that's what's, what, what, what the challenge is in that. So absolutely, it can help in so many ways. Not to mention just magnetizing the things that you require in order for that to happen. I'll give you one example. During our um, uh, during the clubhouse, during our vibration meditation, there was someone that mentioned that they that in the in the in our in our breathing in our orgasmic breathing they felt pressure in the lower parts of their body, specifically in their genital area. As we started to get deeper with this. Um, I, I, I let the person know that, oh, okay, this is where you're having, you're having challenges in the kidneys. Oh, um, okay. And then, and then when we, and when we observed that we had issues in the kidneys, this person was able to identify, oh my gosh, my mother, my mother's mother, my mother's mother, my mother's mother, they all on my, on my, on my maternal side, they all ha ha suffer from kidney disease. Right. And so here it is now, there's an opportunity for this person to now treat their bodies different, address the emotions that I addressed with them, that mm. they see in their family to now deal with it differently. Now that they know this is what could happen. And so naturally, like there, there's just so many, there's so many benefits to touch this orgasm. I can go on and on and on, but I know you got a time limit, so. <laughs> Man. I think this is amazing. I had never heard about touchless orgasm until I had an encounter uh, with you. And so I think people definitely want to learn a lot more about that. If they want to connect with you, how can they do so? Sure. All of my handles and my website is NikkiExperience.com. So that's N-I-K-K-I-E-X-P-E-R-I-E-N-C-E.com. Uh, that's on Instagram. That's uh, my website. Um, that's Facebook, all of it, all of it is my Twitter, all, everything is Nikki experience. Um, I do have a, I do have another page on Instagram just in case, cause I have nude things and, and, and things that say sex. So, uh, you know, you get arrested often, huh? Sorry. 
You get arrested often, huh, online? Oh, my goodness. I'm just, I'm, all I'm doing is just trying to spread some pleasure in the world. You know what I'm saying? Can you just get out of my way? They get don't want you to way. do that, Nikki. You, you, they're not going to let you do that. They're not oh. going to let you be great out here. It's it's inevitable. It's inevitable. So it is. You you know. It's like it's like a bankrupt. It's it's a bankruptcy that that that's still trying to invest. Like get out of here. Like you done. Just let it go and let us be free. So we working on it. We are doing that right now. We are doing that right now. We are doing yeah. it right now. So we're so how, right how how many dreams you visit per night as a soul sexologist? <laughs> you know, all time is now. So. When you are ready is when I'll come. Okay, so when someone is ready, then you you show up. Yeah. So that's how, how it works. Or they feel drawn. I don't have to like I don't I don't have to like advertise and say, hey, I'm a sexologist, come and see me. Even though I said that a bunch of times here because I'm uh -huh. playing. But truly, like the people that come to see me for real, like they do, like they they've had dreams about me, and they said, well, I just I needed to reach out to you. Or they heard my voice and they said that I don't know why, but I just needed to reach out to you. Um, it's 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 that is because it's soul, it's soul work, uh -huh. it's soul work. It's just what it is. This this you know it, this is the reality that we're living now. Let me find out, Nikki out here snatching souls. <laughs> I used to do that, but not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what you do now, Nikki? You ain't snatching <laughs> no souls. What you doing? Huh? No, now, now I have so much company in the house, so I don't have to misbehave like how I used to. Ah. No, I have so many, I have so many more playmates, so many more awakened souls that I can speak to. I'm grateful for Clubhouse and being able to do that. So you know, now I'm I'm settled in, and I just want to play and have fun with everyone, and and spread the joy and the awareness, and 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 continue to reflect each other. That's that's what we're doing. Got you. Got you. Well, we're going to continue this conversation briefly in the clubhouse. Nikki, thank you so much for coming on Off the Fence and getting people off the fence about their sexuality and touchless orgasm and knowing the power of arousals. I really appreciate you doing that. Oh, I'm grateful. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much for reaching out. And OK, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to see you in the clubhouse. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Nikki Morgan. Make sure you guys connect with her uh online in, in, in a, a house or dream near you huh <laughs> i'm wishing you all patience and your pleasure thank you so much yo 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 you're in the mix the world's finest man dj i have the radio on the telly you're in the mix lord